A few days ago on Twitter, Mary Jo Sminke asked me about integrating the LaunchDarkly Java SDK into Cold Fusion. She was referring to a post that I had written back in 2015 in which I was integrating the SDK in Adobe Cold Fusion 10, and I had to jump through a bunch of hoops at the time because of the way that uh, I was using a Java loader library and I had to do a bunch of thread safety stuff. And fast forward six years, 2021, I now use Lucy CFML 5.3, and the integration of the Java SDK is much simpler. And I wanted to take a quick look at that because it just points out the joy of using Cold Fusion as a dynamic application runtime. So I have this feature flag service, and I want to walk through how feature flags work before we get into the nitty gritty of the implementation details. So I have this feature flag service, and I can get the features for a particular user, and a user is identified by some sort of a unique key. This could be the uh, ID within a database, it could be the IP address, it could be some sort of digital fingerprint for the browser. It's something that uniquely identifies a user that is going to be targeted, user in a generic sense. Now, we also can pass in a set of custom properties with the feature flag request, and these properties can be used inside of the LaunchDarkly dashboard for targeting. So in this case, I'm gonna pass in my name, Ben Adel. My role is an admin. And I'm going to also just pass ahead in a set of favorite movies just to show that the values here that we can target against can be actual complex data structures, which is super exciting. And in this demo, all I'm going to do is dump out those feature flags. Now, I can get all of the feature flags or I can get a single one for the sake of the demo. Let's just go with the all. So if we jump over into the browser and let's just refresh. Here you can see that my demo bool variation, I have three feature flags here, demo bool variation, demo JSON variation, and demo string variation. You can have different data types with your feature flags, Boolean variations, JSON variations, strings, doubles, ints. Uh, for this case, we're only using three of those. And here are the values of the feature flags as targeted for the particular user. So we have false, uh, the JSON variation has the struct which first and the string one brings in first. So now let's go into our LaunchDarkly dashboard to see how we can start to target. So let's go into, uh, let's, let's take a look. So the first, let's go ahead and try to target the role of admin, or actually let's just target the user key first. So let's go into our Boolean. Let's come back here. Let's go into our Boolean variation. And you can see by default, it's going to serve false, but I can just target a particular user. So I'm going to paste that in. And now this particular user is going to get the true variation. So if we jump back into our browser, here we have the false. And if I refresh, kablamo, I now have the true variation. You can see that synchronized immediately, instantaneously in the background. That's because LaunchDarkly Java SDK uses the server streaming system, which is way beyond uh, what I understand, except for the fact that I understand it to be awesome. Okay, so let's try something else. So if we jump back here, um, we can look at our role. So now we've, we've looked at a uh, user. Let's look at a custom property. So for that, let's go into the JSON variation. And by default, it gets the first variation. And you can see here in my list of variations, we can just define arbitrary JSON payloads first, second, third. Let's just for the sake of the demo, let's create a totally different one. And let's call this one, which, and this is demo variation, right? So let's save with comment. Uh, hold on, sorry. When you change the variations, you have to confirm it with a little bit of gusto. Okay, so now if we come back in here, by default, everyone's getting the first, right? And that's what we're seeing here. So now let's come in and let's target based on a rule. So we're gonna say the role is one of admin and I'm gonna get the variation that we just created, demo variation, save. Now if we jump back in here, refresh, boom, instantaneously synchronized between the LaunchDarkly dashboard and our Lucy CFML 
cold fusion application totally badass okay and let's go ahead and just target based on the favorite movies because this is a complex data structure and it's going to be fun so let us now go into our final string variation demo by default everyone gets first and if we look in the variations we can see we have first second third and fourth so let's go into the targeting we're going to add a custom rule this time we're going to do the favorite movies and we're going to say contains and we're going to say look it even pre-populates with the values that we've identified within our cold fusion application we can say terminator 2 obviously one of the best movies of all time and for that let's give them the third variation save this jump back into our cold fusion application and bam we now get the third variation instead of the first so just unbelievable power and if you squint hard enough you can start to see that the launch darkly dashboard could actually be like more or less an administrative feature for your entire application depending on how much data you want to jam into it and with the fact that we can do full-on json payloads it's pretty dang flexible okay so now let's take a quick look at how we actually integrate the launch darkly java sdk into our lucy cfml application so the sdk is a set of jar files so in order to create a little bit of abstraction around the jar files i'm creating this launch darkly class loader component and all that's going to do is expose a single method load which takes the name of a class and returns that class object out of the jar files now one of the awesome 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 features of lucy cfml is that in the native create object function i can pass in the class name and then a set of jar paths which would be files and directories to load that class out of so i downloaded the launch darkly java sdk off of the maven repository put it into this directory and now i'm saying just load that class out of those jar files super super easy back in the adobe cold fusion 10 days i was using the java loader that's why i had to jump through a bunch of hoops lucy cfml makes this totally totally seamless totally easy um, but i still wanted to put it behind this small abstraction just in case we want to change the way we're loading jar files in the future so now if we jump over into our application cfc in our on application start um, i'm loading in my sdk key I didn't want to commit that to the repository for obvious reasons. Uh, I'm going to create my launch directly class loader. That's the component we just looked at that has the dot load method. And then I'm going to create my feature flags component. I'm going to pass in my class loader to load those launch directly values. And I'm going to pass in my SDK key. That's to access the launch directly API. So now let's take a look at how feature flags work. So here's our feature flag component our cold fusion component i have my class loader my sdk i'm going to initialize through that class loader an instance of the ld client that's the launch darkly client pass in the sdk now what i need to do is define the set of feature flags that are going to be available in my application now you may have many many feature flags defined in your launch darkly dashboard you don't necessarily want to pull all of those into your cold fusion application especially because you might be sharing the launch darkly dashboard across multiple teams that have different deployment boundaries not everyone's going to use the same flags so i like to have an explicit set of flags available in my application this way we limit the number of flags that we actually ever evaluate now it becomes a little bit tricky because we have different types of feature flags meaning they can provide different data values our booleans we have doubles ints we have our json payloads right which we saw in the demo there we which are completely essentially open-ended data structures super exciting uh, and we have our strings so to make it easy to define what i like to do is break down the feature flags by type and then within each one of these buckets the key is the key of the feature flag so demo bool variation if we jump back into the browser and we look at our launch darkly dashboard you can see that's the actual key so demo string variation if we jump back in here you can see here is our demo string variation and then this value is the value that we would return if the launch darkly client failed to connect to its remote streaming service so this is kind of a fallback in a worst case scenario but that's basically never happened to me in like six years of using launch darkly i don't think i've ever really had a problem connecting to launch darkly it's it's a solid service 
So uh, this collate feature flags then takes all of these values and combines them into a single array. So if we jump down to this, or a single uh, struct, uh, all we do is we loop over that bucketing, right, that bool, string, JSON, etc., and then we collate that into a single collection where we just include the type, the feature key, and that default value. And this just gives us a single collection that we can now look at for our feature flags. So when we go now to get the features, for example, which we saw, let's just jump back to our main page here, which we saw getting features, we're passing in that user key, we're passing in that user property, that set of properties, that's what we're doing here. Um, first, we have to build an LD user instance as a launch darkly user instance. This is the instance that's being used to target the feature flag. So we're passing in the key, we're passing in the properties, and we'll look at what this does in a minute. But then all we do is map, essentially loop over that, that collated set of feature flags and get the variation for each feature flag given the LD user. And then that's just what we're returning. And again, if we jump into the browser, that's what we're seeing here. That's this. This is the feature flag keys mapped on to the values that were targeted for the given user. So these are the variations that the user is receiving. So let's jump back here. Let's now look at what get LD user is doing. This is using the builder club. Sorry. This is using the builder class within the Java SDK. This is the key, the identifier for the user. Remember, this could be something like the database primary key. This could be an IP address, a browser user agent, something that uniquely identifies the request as it relates to targeting within the LaunchDarkly system. But then we have our set of properties. Now, the, uh, the LD user builder class and the LD user class have a set of common properties that you can use, like country, email, first name, IP, last name, etc. Um, but then it has this just catch-all custom property where you can give it any name and any value, essentially, any serializable value. And that's what I'm doing here with the, with the array of favorite movies. This is essentially just any arbitrary serializable value. Um, and the LD value, that's essentially just a fancy JSON payload. Um, not even worth looking at. Uh, so that was, let's jump back up to our get features. So that was building the user. And again, the user is what is used to target the particular variation for a feature flag. And if we look at the get variation, we just look at the type of the feature flag that we're looking at, right? So bool, double, and JSON string. And we have to know the type because we have to call a special type aware function on the LD client. We then pass in the key, the feature key. That's the that's the key that we see here in the LaunchDarkly dashboard. We're passing in that LD user that we defined just a moment ago. And then we pass in the default value. And again, the default value in this case is here only if the LaunchDarkly client cannot connect to the remote LaunchDarkly service. So again, in like six years of using LaunchDarkly, I don't think I've ever actually had to use this value, but it is something that you need to provide because it is a fallback in case there is a, uh, a problem with the load or, or a network connectivity issue or, or uh, something to that effect. And with the JSON value, you can see that uh, it gets returned as a JSON string, and then we have to deserialize it in our own code. And that's it. I mean, that's basically, right? I mean, we're looking here at 250 lines of code to pull in the LaunchDarkly Java SDK into our ColdFusion application. And look at the magic we get. All this dynamic dynamic value, right? Like, let's just jump into one more of these. So let's go into, uh, let's go into the string variation where we're returning third. Uh, we're still in here, right? So now let's go ahead and just return, change this over to first, save. And instantly, instantly, these are two completely different systems. This uh, Lucy CFML application is running on my local computer, running command box. LaunchDarkly is obviously running in a remote server somewhere. And it instantly updated to reflect the variation that I chose in the LaunchDarkly dashboard in my Lucy CFML runtime. I mean, that's, it's bananas. It's bananas how fast and flexible and just amazing the LaunchDarkly system is. And with Lucy CFML, Right, the ability to load Java classes out of a set of jar files, 
The fact that the cold fusion runtime is generally extremely flexible means we can return any kind of data type to match the variations uh, in, in different data types that the Launch Darkly SDK provides. I mean, it's just, it's really very pleasant and very fascinating and very amazing to use. And the feature flags are awesome. Um, if you want to know how awesome they are, check out my video that I did at the Adobe Cold Fusion Developer Week conference on how uh, I believe that the use of feature flags changes everything about product development. And uh, yeah, just have a great time with it.